I know at the same time that there's a leader listening who like that advice that you gave of, you know, focusing on where focusing in a sense on your sweet spot, focusing on your strength, focusing on where you you are most skilled and able and what brings you the most joy. I know there's leaders listening who say, that's great. I know my sweet spot. I know where where the most efficient use of my time is. Mm -hmm. But because of the state of where we are, it's not possible for me to only focus on this. I'm still covering over here and I'm covering over here. Would you then recommend the same advice to that person of taking the time for you to dissociate and look at things from a from a top down view or would the advice be different? It would be the same. And my thought is if you know what your sweet spot is and you've still got these other two things to do, can you, because everything in life is about perspective and everything is about perspective. Can you shift and your perspective is looking at your sweet spot, where you are most effective, what you do best. How does that impact these other two elements to, to use your example? How does that impact them? And what can you do to bring people in? And it may be people you've already got because hiring is an issue in and of itself right now. You know, who have you got that each of those, that's their sweet spot. Mm. And is it slightly changing somebody's position? who could run with that. And you know, when you're in your sweet spot, you can get done something in a half an hour that takes you eight hours when it's not your sweet spot. Yeah. Right. And so all of you can function more efficiently. And if that's not a possibility, how can you focus on what is your sweet spot and allocate hours to each of those other pieces that's not? And then yes. stay in the sweet spot. Not only does it make those other two seem less foreboding, when you're doing them, it doesn't feel as if you're drowning in them. It feels like it's a part of it. Yeah. Right? So again, we're back to what's the story you're telling yourself? Mm. That I've got to survive this. I've got to do all of this. And I've got to do it in the way I'm doing it because it's the only thing I know. Step back a moment. You know, and whether you're working with an effective coach or you've got that wisdom you can speak with a friend about, you know, it doesn't matter. However you get there, take that time to remember the sweet spot is your most effective. Yeah. And when you're in that, you can work with these other things more effectively. It's, it's up to you really to, to get support if you need. If you're so far into the weeds, you need somebody to help you come out. Ask. Yeah. Ask. And that's that's the big one. Ask. As much as coaching has been around for a couple decades now, people are still hesitant to ask. Yeah. Is it really worth the money? Is it really worth the time? Yes. <laughs> it's pretty effective. Yes. And it relieves a lot of stress from your life when you're focusing on your own zone of genius. It brings you more joy in what you do. Yeah. All around a great solution. Sage yeah. advice. Yeah. Yeah. And this is about making you the best leader you can be. But that means recognizing, as I said, I, I created these five leadership styles that I, in my observation, is, is really the pretty consistent pattern. There are many, you know, I can tell you as a psychologist, I study so many personalities, styles, so many bad constructs out there, so many different ones exist. Um, but with this leadership component that I created, it's really looking at, are you that creative leader? Mm. Many creative folks have limited ability to implement, but they're marvelously creative. Well, own that, that that's where your skill set comes in. Yeah. And, you know, who can you bring in that's a great implementer that may not have a creative thought in their mind, but together you could become a really effective team. Or how can you develop some of your own abilities to implement? What techniques can you put in place that support you in implementation? But recognize you'll never become a great implementer. That's not your strength. Yours is in the creative element. So yes. how can you bring in support? What do you need to do? What systems do you need to set up that help with implementation? And some are great implementers. Just tell me where to go and what to do. Yeah. Frustrated because they have no direction. That's me. I, I think that's me. At least I haven't taken the test, but. Yeah. You know that once, once you have that, working on the creative, just speaking with somebody. You know, if I were working with you and you didn't know, we're back to what feeds you. What are the strengths you've had that have brought success to your life so far? 
Yeah. What is your vision of success going forward in five years, 10 years, and 20 years? What does that look like to you? And if you can really bring that in, just, oh, I just want to be a big success. Good for you. Good luck getting there. <laughs> you want to do that. In what area do you want to do that? Is it going to be in broadcasting? Is this simply going to be a, a backdrop to what you're really doing? I mean, it, it, that's up to you. Yeah. And so then if you know that, then you know what you want to start focusing on learning, where you want to start making connections, where you want to find mentors, yes. what you want to do in that industry. And just the fact that you now have a focus makes you feel more alive and more vibrant. And a challenge is just a challenge. It's not, oh, my God, another battle I have to win. Yeah. You no. Know? And it because perspective changes. Mm hmm. It because the story changes. 